Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you're all doing well. This is my Bible study called Faith in God, and this is part two. So, if you haven't seen part one, I'll put a link down in the description. Go back and check it out first, and then come back to this one. <laughs> so there's much information in part one. I kind of went over my time, but we're going to try to... to uh, Get this Bible study done today and in today's Bible study we're going to delve about the seven ways we can have faith and how God has faith so I hope it'll help you in some way let's get started I did this Bible study after much prayer and research so I hope it helps so faith in God part two seven ways we can have faith so number one straight away we need to pray I put pray as number one because I feel like it's the most important I mean they're all important but pray is super important. We should be praying every day. Every day we should be praying for others, for our family, for our friends, for our church, for the unsaved, for the lost, and the Christians everywhere. You know, not just not just them, but pray for the, the Christians that are being persecuted. Pray for the martyrs. Pray for everyone. We need to pray and keep everybody in our prayers. Especially though, you know, praying for our family, praying for our fellow Christians because we need to all be strong in one body, one body of Christ. So pray that God will move through, heal, help, comfort, and bless all. So Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Love that verse. So number two, we need to study the Word. We need to embrace the teachings of the Bible, have faith. It is the Word of God and it can change our lives. Reading the Bible for ourselves daily, daily, we need to read it. You can't just open, crack it open, you know, every so often and read one verse out of it and call it good. No, we need to read multiple chapters, if not more than that, a day. We need to be doing Bible studies, our own Bible studies, or watch other people doing Bible studies, or, you know, somehow being involved in a Bible study. Praying always, again, prayer. So praying and reading the Word. Reflecting on the Word. Meditating on the Word. And that with hope and faith, God will continue to shape and mold us into His image. One of my favorite verses says, uh, is t 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that you needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, a few things there that we need to consider. We need to study. We need to study. Right? And we need to not so we are not ashamed. How are we ashamed? Is if we can't help somebody with a verse or if we can't back up um, you know, our faith with verses. We need to rightly divide the word truth, meaning we need to make sure that what we're reading, if it applies to us, uh, what dispensation it belongs in, if it applies to another group of people at another point in time, you know, and dealt with in a different way, that's dispensation. So we need to divide the word truth and make sure what we're reading is can be applied to us today, you know, and if, if not, who it was for. So number three, we need hope. We need to have hope and look forward to our Lord Jesus Christ's return, in whom all hope and faith we have is placed. We must believe by faith that Jesus will return and usher in his kingdom and his glory and comfort us for all eternity. And we can be with him, serving with him, worshiping, and in our glorified bodies, in bliss for all eternity. First Peter 1.21 says, Who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Alright, so number four, we need to be strong in our faith. Stand firm. If we are fickle in our faith, or if it wavers, God will not will not be pleased. In fact, Hebrews 10.38 says just that. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. 
let's dissect that for a second. Now the just. Who are the just? We are the just. If we we are followers of Christ, followers of Jesus, and b believe in God and are born again, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, believe in the gospel, which is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, then we should live by faith. But if any man draws back, if we're fickle about it, if we're, uh, you know, so-so about it, then it will displease the Lord. He will not have pleasure in us. He will not be pleased with us. But we need to not be fickle. We need to not, you know, be halfway or lukewarm. We need to be on fire and full, full on faith. What we need. So number five, we need, we can have faith. So here's another reason why we can have faith. We can have faith by helping others. Helping all things. Listen, preach, guide. Preach again. <laughs> and uh, because preach is so important, right? It is. So we need to help. We need to be active in our pursuits to bring others to Christ. You know, we can't be a couch Christian. <laughs> we can't just sit and be a couch potato Christian. We need to get up and... and you know, spread the good news, the gospel, which again is First Corinthians fifteen one through four is the gospel. Christ's burial, resurrection, his death, burial, and resurrection, that he shed his blood for our sins. So Psalm forty one one through two, blessed is he that considereth the poor, the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou wilt not deliver him unto. The will of his enemies. It's a good verse. All these verses are good. Number six, love. We need love. Love others more than ourselves. We need to care for one another. Have fellowship with people. Motivate people. Encourage each other. Bring others up. We need to be others' pillar to lean on. We need to be supportive we need to love love others as much as you love yourself Romans 12 10 says be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another Jesus himself said love your enemies so everyone needs our love everyone we should be praying for our enemies. We should be praying for our loved ones. We should be praying for our friends. We should be praying and helping and loving family, friends, strangers alike. We need love. Number seven, we should rest. We should rest in the greatness of God. God is good all the time. Psalm 6410 says, The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him. And all the upright in heart shall glory. Rest and know. So, so faith is resting. We need to have confidence and rest knowing that with God is salvation. Believing in Jesus Christ is salvation. Believing in the blood of Jesus Christ. And again, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, the gospel that Jesus Christ shed his blood for us. Okay, and now we're going to move on to seven truths on how God is faithful. So we went through how we can be faithful. This is how God is faithful. So number one, 1 Corinthians 1, 9. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. That is basically, I'm giving seven examples proving and showing how God, our God, is faithful. Number two, Deuteronomy 7 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Number three, Psalm 119 90. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth and it abideth a little footnote there for you guys abideth is stands so it stands the earth stands in God's faithfulness unto all generations so number four 
1 Thessalonians 5.24 Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. So, who calls you? God. And he is faithful. He is faithful. Number 5, 2 Timothy 2.13 If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. So, we have to believe because God is always faithful to us. Verse Peter 4.19 says, Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit their souls, commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. God is our creator. He is a faithful creator. And lastly, 1 John 7, I'm sorry, 1 John 1 9, excuse me. 1 John 1 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I just love that verse. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us. When we confess, we're not just saying, yeah, I'm guilty, sorry. No, we're getting cleaned from all our uncleanliness. And from that point forward, we should strive with God's help not to fall back into our sins. So, how do we know God will always be faithful? In the next section, we are going to look at seven attributes that are so necessary for our God to be faithful. Without these seven attributes, God cannot be faithful. So, stay tuned for part three. And again, I just want to say thank you so much for watching, listening, reading. I hope this helps you in some way, shape, or form. I thank God so much and the Holy Spirit who guided me, helped me write this to share with everyone and anyone. Please remember to watch part three next. And that's where I go more in depth about the seven attributes that are vital and necessary for God to be faithful. You're not going to want to miss it. So please stay tuned. And if you haven't already, watch part one. I'll put a link in the description for part one. I'll put a link in the description for part three. So please check them all out. So thank you again. TTFN. Ta-ta for now. Take care. God bless. And remember to put God first in everything you do. And have faith in him. God bless.